Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 35 of Chess Basics, Things Every Chess Player Ought to Know. Uh, today we're going to continue these end games with the pawns against pieces. And uh, we're going to move on. Last time we looked at the bishop, this time we're going to look at the knight. Um, the knight is a short range piece, so uh, if it wants to fight against a pawn, it has to be at least in the neighborhood. And uh, it can be a pretty effective fighter if it's if it's close enough. So here's, here's an example where... Um, the knight can hold the draw. I should say, uh, by way of preference, just like in the previous case, a minor piece by itself cannot win the game. So white, uh, the, the side with the minor piece in general, is uh, is just playing for a draw, whereas black is trying to uh, win. So there's only two outcomes here. Either white succeeds and draws, or uh, black wins. So uh, anyway, black is pushing on with the pawn, kicking the knight, and um, if he can drive the knight to a bad square, um, then the pawn has a chance, but um, there's a good square for the knight here, knight c3, uh, guarding the uh, queening square. And then uh, the pawn can push on, and then that gives uh, white time enough to bring his king in. So uh, with the king close by, basically it's, it's pretty hopeless. White can just stay here defending the um, <clears throat> knight, so uh, black can't really chase the knight away. And eventually... Uh, He's going to have to try and queen that pawn, and when he does, the knight is just going to take it. Like this, for example. And that's good enough. So, um, this position is a draw, and the... Uh, yeah, cancel that. I wanted to back up to the beginning here. <coughs> and the reason it's a draw is that um, the knight is in proximity of the pawn here, and the kings are far away, and the knight, knight can hold it by itself. So let's let's look at another position. Um, back up one. Okay, yeah, this one. Um, so we went immediately from a case that was a uh, draw to a case that's a win. And uh, the difference is just the location. I'll show you once again. Back up. Just I just moved the pawn and the knight over to the pawn uh, being on the rook file. The problem is that uh, after the pawn moves, um, look at the squares the knight can go to. Here here, here, and here. He has uh, four choices, <clears throat> but none of them um, guard either the, um, the A7 square, or the A2 square, or the A1 square, these, these two squares that the knight is going to get to. He really needs, um, if he wanted to stop, you know, let's turn these highlights off. If he wanted to stop the pawn on, um, on this square, on A2, then the knight would have to move to here, here, or here, one of those three squares. But you can see each of those squares is at least two hops away. So, uh, and if the uh, knight wants to stop the pawn before it gets to a1, it needs to go to this square or this square. But those squares are actually three hops away. One, for example, to get to this square. You could go, um, <clears throat> how would you do that? Uh, something like here, here, here. It's three moves to get to a square right next to the knight. And yeah, if it could somehow teleport itself uh, that way, uh, uh, then it would uh, be able to stop the pawn, but it can't do that. So even though it's the knight's turn to move, uh, the pawn just gets there first. So, so the knight comes in, but uh, too late at that point. Um, <clears throat> so this is a win. Let's go, go back to that one. This position is a win for uh, black if it's black's turn to move. And, um, and the reason is that this uh, because it's a rook pawn, there's no squares on the other side of the pawn. The pawn, the knight really wants to go to some square out here <laughs> next to that, next to the a3 square. Um, but it's just not there. So this is a, a win for the side with the, uh, with the pawn. So that's something to keep in mind. You've got to watch out for those rook pawns when you've got a knight and you're fighting against it. Now here's another position which is a draw. And it just goes to show even when the king is in a position to help out, um, uh, the knight by itself can actually effectively stop a pawn. So the idea you might have here is that maybe you could use the king to drive the knight away. So king here attacking the knight. The knight can go in front of the pawn. And um, if you go to the side to chase the knight away, um, the knight can go to the other side and um, cancel that. Uh, it can go actually here. It, it could, in this case, it could have gone to either of those squares because uh, they guard the knight from their guards against this square. Um, but I played knight f2. Um, 
we uh, back up and play that again. Yeah, knight f2. This is an interesting configuration, too. So you might want to uh, let's erase some of the decorations here and uh, just see if you can <coughs> remember this position with the knight parallel to the pawn and guarding squares in front of it. So you can see there's just no way that uh, black is ever going to be able to push that pawn. And even to chase the knight again, he would have to uh, go all the way up and around because uh, the knight is guarding all of these squares. So uh, it's a pretty effective uh, <coughs> piece there, stopping the, um, stopping the pawn. So let's look at the next case. I, I moved this closer to the edge, but not quite a rook pawn just yet, so it's a knight pawn. Um, so there's fewer squares for the knight to hop to, but even here, um, the knight can uh, effectively stop the pawn. Now you might think, well, the king can go over here, and uh, we know <clears throat> from the previous example, if the king goes to uh, a2, for example, as a variation, the knight can just go here, and uh, the pawn's just not going anywhere, and the king, and once again, is sort of trapped over there. Um, but um, suppose you go the other way. So the knight goes to b1, you go to c2 here, and then the knight can go back to this square, and that uh, guards here and uh, checks the king. And the uh, king can go forward, you know, trying to promote the pawn. Um, the knight can't move now, but uh, white has a king that can move, and so there's nothing better to do than queen the pawn, and it gets taken. So that is a draw once again. If we back up to the beginning, now back up to the beginning. Yeah, this once again is a draw. The knight is in a position to stop the pawn, and it can do it even without the help of his own king. So let's look at one more position here. It's kind of similar, but now it's a, a rip pawn. The knight is here, and um, the black king is a little bit closer. So uh, <clears throat> in this position, black can win. And the way he does it is he comes in, he chases the knight. The knight goes in front of the pawn, and then the king has to approach uh, carefully, he can't go to this square because the knight's guarding it, and he can't go to this square, but he has this path along the dark squares there to get to the knight. Uh, White's king is just too far away. He brings his king in, and the king goes to b2. And now you see the problem from the, the square in front of the uh, rook pawn. Once again, he wants to go to squares over here on the opposite side <coughs> from the king, but there are no squares on the opposite side. So the only squares he can reach are these two light squares, and the king can just uh, take the knight and then queen the pawn. So black wins this position. Go back. So this is a winning position for white. Okay, one more. Um, I'm not going to give the answer away. I'm going to ask you to think about this. Uh, you might uh, consider that uh, black has a rook pawn and his king is in a uh, position to chase the knight away. And the knight is on this kind of funny square over here. So you might uh, think it's possible for uh, black to win this game. But, uh, <clears throat> well, you can pause the video and think about it for a while if you want to. It turns out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the variations here. It turns out this is a draw. So this is another position that's important to remember. Uh, again, the knight is on the same line as the pawn. It's kind of parallel to it and just a couple squares removed. And uh, it's guarding key squares here and here that the king can't easily step forward. <clears throat> um, and the first point is that if the pawn goes forward, you have this move, knight c1 check. And uh, that just wins the, uh, well, it doesn't win the pawn, but it's, it, it uh, creates a draw because you can take the pawn. So it's these tactics that make the, the knight a good defender. So it's the, the position of the knight, and it turns out to be, this just turns out to be a really good position for the knight here, parallel to the pawn and guarding these squares next to it. Um, the king is over here trying to chase it away, but it's one step away from that. So there's lots of other tries. Um, let's see, what, what did I look at? If the king goes in front, cancel that. Let's have this variation already here. King to a2. Um, White's king tries to come up. King goes here, now getting out of the way and putting the king somewhere where the knight can't check it and preparing to push the pawn to a2. But now the knight can just go to this square. And uh, once again, if the king comes around to harass the knight, um, the knight can go back to uh, um, the square where it came from. So uh, it's just not uh, having any luck. So uh, just to show that, what I mean is the uh, king could come forward and then just directly harass the knight there 
and then I can just go here. And this repeats the situation we were in before. And once again, you can't uh, push the pawn forward. Of course, uh, the knight didn't even have to move in this case because the king was already defending it. But uh, <clears throat> if the knight king weren't there, the, the knight still by itself could hold off uh, that pawn. So uh, that was one try. So we're in this situation. Uh, pushing the pawn doesn't work. Moving the king in front doesn't work. Try moving the king behind. But the knight... Um, just getting the king out of the way and preparing to push the pawn. The king just is in a square where he can't be uh, checked, so there is no fork. And the knight can't come in and easily stop the pawn, but the knight can go directly to c1, stopping the pawn here. <clears throat> and now the king can't really get in and harass the knight very easily. He can start coming around, but then uh, white's king comes in. So uh, once again, a draw, no progress there. What else could uh, the king try here? King c3, directly attacking the knight is another try. Cancel that. I already have these variations plotted out. Once again, the knight can go in front to c1. And if the king uh, tries to chase the knight away, it goes in front of the pawn. The king goes here. Um, and the knight can go back here. <laughs> if the king goes here, then the knight can go this way to stop the pawn. And if the king attacks it, it can go back to this configuration, which is where we started. <laughs> So there's just no way. And then one other try for at the beginning. Uh, let's see. We tried the king here, king there, king there. Um, he could go um, king to c2, kind of going forward and attacking the knight. But the knight can go to this square behind the pawn. And uh, the king attacks the uh, knight. Then the knight um, <clears throat> goes back to where it was. Cancel that. The king goes here. The knight just goes. This is a new variation. The knight just goes back where it was, so no progress. And then uh, what else could he try? Um, knight b4 check. The king could also go here. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the, But the knight is stopping the pawn from uh, progressing, so the uh, white can just bring his king forward. So there's there's really no uh, no way out of it. After knight b4 check, yeah, king b1 was the other one I, I looked at. So there's no knight check here, and now the knight is... Uh, <clears throat> the pawn is not, but the pawn is not threatening to come forward because the knight's still covering that square. So whenever the pawn moves forward, the knight will just take it. So this position, if we go back to the beginning, <clears throat> this position with the knight uh, uh, right here is a draw, even though it's a rook pawn and even though the king is in position. So the knight is a pretty good defender. Just a few cases with the rook pawn uh, far advanced. Or if the knight is out of play, if the knight is not, uh, the knight gets caught in an awkward spot, uh, then sometimes it can't uh, get there in time to stop the pawn. But always, if, you've, if you're the side with the knight or if you're playing against the knight, always be uh, on the lookout for these tricks with the checks. That's, uh, that's how the knight uh, <laughs> earns its place in the <laughs> as uh, being nearly as powerful as a bishop is because it has all these tricky moves. It's a very good close-end fighter. Um, so I wanted to move on to cases where there are two pawns fighting against the knight. So um, we're going to look at the case where the pawns are separated. And like with the case of the bishop, when you have separated pawns working against a knight, they're very effective. The knight can stop both of them, but only, uh, but only one at a time, if you know what I mean. So um, black can go ahead and push one of those pawns forward. Oh, I made it white move. So say white white uh, moves his king forward. The knight's in a perfect spot. It can't uh, really move without letting one of the pawns go. And that's the problem. So one of the pawns does run, and the knight has to take it, and then the other pawn runs. And then the knight can't get back anywhere in time to stop that pawn from becoming a queen. So, uh, you know, unless there's some tricks with forks of the king and the queen here, um, there's just no way to stop this kind of position. So this is just a, just a win for the side with the split pawns, even though the knight is in a good spot. Um, now, uh, connected pawns, the bishop was an effective piece uh, fighting against connected pawns, and the knight can help a little bit against connected pawns. It has some good characteristics. Um, it, it controls this sort of mini diagonal here, the two squares in front of the pawns. And if they're pawns are far enough back, then this is uh, good enough for a draw. So, for example, if uh, black tries to push this pawn, oh, it's white's turn to move, king comes up, um, black tries to push a pawn, and the knight can just take it, and when the other pawn comes forward, um, the knight can go here, for example, and guard this queening square. And, um, 
the king is going to get there in time to uh, prevent their uh, from being any trouble with the knight being chased away, and he's just going to gobble that pawn, and so the result will be a draw. Um, <clears throat> if instead of pushing this pawn, you could try pushing the other pawn, um, but it's a similar kind of thing. Uh, the knight can just take that pawn, and uh, it's in position to stop the other pawn from queening. But you'll notice the pawns did get one move in, so it's very crucial that these are not yet... Uh, uh, too far advanced. So when they're on the, the fifth and the sixth ranks like that, uh, then they're far enough back that the pawn can hold them. And the king has to be uh, close enough to get in and uh, keep the uh, black king away. If the black king were here to uh, promote these pawns, help promote these pawns, he could potentially sacrifice one of the pawns and promote the other one. So, um, <clears throat> But with the king's far away, the, the knight can hold up two connected pawns similarly to the case with the bishop, although they do have to be further away. Um, so let's go on to the next one. And here's, yeah, here's an example. So I, I just made this, uh, <clears throat> move the pawns forward one step, and it's uh, still white's turn to move, so the king comes up. Um, there's no point in moving the uh, knight. He's already guarding these two key squares. But then uh, black can just start pushing these pawns, and the knight's got to take that one or it'll become a queen, but then the other one becomes a queen. So uh, this is a pretty easy win for the side with the pawns. So connected pass pawns will win if they're far enough advanced, and uh, widely separated pass pawns will, will always win, um, as long as the kings are not there to help out. So let's look at a case where the kings are involved. Now this is a situation which is uh, critical. If it were black's turn to move here, black would just win. And the winning technique is simply to push this pawn with check. The king will take this pawn, and then black's king comes forward to f2. And there's no move by the knight or the king that will stop this pawn on uh, e2 from going to e1 and becoming a queen. So it's just, um, if we back up, get rid of the arrows here. So it's, it's black's turn to move. Move one, e2, check. King takes, move two is king to f2, and then white plays any move at all. There's no checks from the knight and no moves from the king that will stop the pawn, and then you just queen it. So it's just uh, two just two, uh, two moves away from becoming a queen, and uh, no way to stop it. So, um, But that's if it's black's turn to move. I set this up so it was white's turn to move, and uh, white can hold a draw once again. Um, and it's a very typical kind of technique. This is the way you often uh, can draw these games, and that is to just sacrifice the knight. Now, if um, black takes, king takes, obviously a draw. So uh, his only hope is to try something like king f2, trying to move the pawn forward this way. And uh, what you can play in this case is knight e4 check. So you gotta gotta buy these uh, tempos with you can <laughs> when you can. Um, and uh, if the king goes for the knight, you can just move your king in front of the pawn and let him have the knight, because this is a draw. You should know this from your king and pawn endings. So that's, uh, that's the other idea you have to stop these uh, two pawns. So you can sacrifice the knight for one of the pawns and then uh, make sure that your king is in position so you have a drawn king and pawn ending with the other pawn. Very, very common technique. Okay, let's look at a case where, um, once again, um, <clears throat> if it were Black's turn to move, he would be able to win this. And um, the reason he can win it is he's got a pawn over here on uh, b2 that is keeping this knight tied down. So the knight can't ever really move away or this will become a queen. And so he can bring his king over to support this pawn. And if it's Black's turn to move, he gets the first move, White gets one move, and then the king gets to this key square, um, e2, which um, just guards the whole path of this pawn to become a queen. And uh, the knight has no moves that check, and if he moves away without check, then this other pawn will become a queen. And uh, the king, the black king, is in a position to keep the uh, white king out from in front of the pawn. So, uh, so this is a win for black if it's black's turn to move. But I set this up. I set this problem up so it's white's turn to move, and if it's white's turn to move, it's a draw. And the drawing move is king to g1, just getting in front of the pawn. 
So this is the other common drawing technique. Um, we have to use this when pawns are separated. You just uh, use your king to stop one of the pawns and you use your knight to stop the other one. So um, black can move his king around, but it doesn't do anything. If he advances the pawn, white will just take it. Um, so he can try um, making a queen. Knight takes, knight takes, king takes. But then uh, white's, white's king gets in front of the other pawn and uh, will be in a position to take it. So this uh, is a draw once again. So uh, that's it. That's the, the subject of knight versus pawn. So the main points, I guess, to reiterate, look out for these rook pawns. They can be very hard to stop. Um, remember this configuration when there is a rook pawn. If you can get your knight to this square and stop that pawn um, before it gets up to the seventh rank, then you have a chance of holding it a draw, even if your king isn't in the way. And... Um, <clears throat> and then looking at these positions with doubled pawns, um, the separated doubled pawns, uh, they, they win against the knight. If they're connected uh, um, pawns, I didn't mean doubled pawns, I meant if their pawns are separated, the knight can, can't really stop both of them. Um, if the pawns are connected or close together like this, then there are cases where uh, the knight has time to take one pawn and get in position to stop the other one. But if they're too far advanced, then the knight can't even stop them in this case. And then um, the way to, to really uh, draw these games, the most effective way to draw these games is to uh, get your king in position and uh, then be willing to sacrifice the knight. Uh, okay, so that's it for your uh, knight versus, uh, or pawns versus knight in games. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, next time, I think I'm going to take a look at um, simple bishop same color bishop endings. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, leave any comments you have in the section below. See you again soon. Bye.